chapter and i am reminded of uh, the quote which i have i think mentioned before the hardest arithmetic to master is the one which enables us to count our blessings so with greater and greater contribution of women in all things including big data including technology including digital stuff i wonder where the world would have been if we did not have the active participation support and collaboration of women so women in big data rock now women in big data of course professes uh, gender participation in big data influenced careers we realize that progressive modern fortune 500 and other large companies realize the value of equity diversity and inclusion and the india chapter of course harbors large ticket ambitions as you were seeing and to bring you know a kind of world class uh to bring a world of exponential technologies powered by big data so this is where gayatri i think has a major major role to play because gayatri is all about developing leaders in data science and in related fields so may i request uh, shriniti for you to take over and uh, take it forward from here because gayatri is something on which i think you are far more qualified than i am to be able to speak so over to you shriniti yes uh, thank you mr priyush so good evening to one and all present here and i i i'd like to welcome you all first of all uh, for for the launch event of gayatri so i am shriniti and i am the program lead for gayatri and i'd like this uh, i'd like to take this opportunity to talk about the gayatri program so the major objective of the gayatri program is to develop women leaders um, in the industry so we aim to achieve this objective oh, i'm sorry this one yes so we aim to achieve this objective by identifying mentors with both a leadership and technical experience in the industry to train women aspiring to enter into the data field so next we uh, the gayatri program also aims to um, offer the required support and resources for incubating women oriented tech startups and also uh, by partnering with firms and in institutions to uh, you know gather the resources to uh, incubate women startups like tech based uh, women startups so we aim to achieve our objective by uh, these three action points so we are actually kick starting the gayatri program by launching our uh, mentoring program so the objective of the mentoring program is basically to uh, identify mentors uh, who are leaders in the industry uh, in the data science field so uh, uh, so the mentoring program basically aims to offer guidance and coaching to nurture future women leaders in data uh, the mentoring program associates uh, leaders in the data field which is the mentor with women passionate about data and who want to enter into the data field which will actually be the mentee so moving on the typical timeline for a mentoring program looks somewhat like this so the first step is to basically identify mentors with the leadership and technical experience uh, Uh, in the data field to mentor women who are passionate uh, about data and want to start a career in the data field and the next step in the timeline is to map mentors with mentee by taking in by taking different parameters of interest into consideration and the specific goals of the mentee and the third um, step in the timeline would be selection of topics that is so we basically taking the parameters of interest into account and uh, select certain topics to achieve the end goal of the mentee and the fourth step will be is the execution part wherein we devise syllabus you know schedule sessions and timelines to cover all of the planned topics um, within the stipulated timeline and finally uh, tracking the progress is obviously very essential so we track the progress made by the mentee and schedule follow ups as uh, as and when required in order to finally achieve that end goal so this is what a typical timeline for uh, the mentoring program looks like so we actually formulated a set of roles and responsibilities for the mentor so the mentor must have 15 plus years of experience working in the data field and uh, he or she must be able to commit to a minimum of one hour per week for a period of 6 to 12 months and it is the responsibility of the mentee to discuss and understand the requirements of the mentee and also the end goal of the mentee so based on this discussion um, the mentor must help in finalizing the topics to be covered by the end of the stipulated timeline that is by the end of the mentoring program so the mentor and mentee work to devise a timeline to cover all of the uh, topics and uh, track the mentee's progress and follow up on uh, topics covered during each of the sessions 
So after every session, the mentor must also track the progress, make plans for the next session, and uh, also discuss about the things that needs to be done before the next session. All of this must be documented, obviously. So the end goal is to strive and ensure that the established initial goals are, are accomplished by the end of the stipulated timeline. So moving on, we also have certain roles and responsibilities to the mentee as well. So the mentee must have three plus years of uh, experience in the industry, and he she must be able to commit for a minimum of one hour per week for a period of six to 12 months. The mentee must have certain requirements and an end goal, obviously. So she must be able to communicate it with the mentor so that topics can be finalized and the timeline can be put together in place. Um, so the mentee must also record each session and share it with Women in Big Data India. So after every session, as discussed earlier, the progress made uh, plans for next session and the things to be done must also be documented. So one thing to be noted here is that this is completely a mentoring uh, program. And uh, this does not offer any sort of um, job assistance or reference. This is completely a mentoring program. And uh, Job assistance is completely uh, uh, up to the discretion of the mentor. If the mentor finds a role that he or she sees uh, fit for the mentee, then they can go ahead and uh, suggest that. So next, moving on, I'd like to introduce our cohort one of the mentoring program, Bhavya and uh, Akhila. So Bhavya is the vice president of business analysis and strategy at Moody's. So she's responsible for developing their strategic business intelligence capabilities and uh, also for formulating uh, strategic responses. And Akila is, is a technical program manager at Intel Corporation with almost 14 years of experience working in the semiconductor industry. Her responsibilities involve efficiently managing customer deliverables, creating cross-functional partnerships, uh, project management, and also partnering with executive teams to define and develop solutions. So next, I'd like to hand it over to Bhavya and Akhila to tell us about their mentoring journey so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Srinati. So I, I, I'll kick off uh, uh, this this uh, slide. So hi, I, hi everybody. I am Bhavya. And as Srinati mentioned that I am currently the Vice President of Strategy and Business uh, Intelligence and in, in Moody's Investor Services. I am responsible for uh, uh, spearheading and, and leading all the strategic in initiatives which are backed by data and insights within Moody's. And uh, it's, it's a financial uh, services organization which is pretty much into uh, credit rating and analyzing bonds for, for uh, a lot of companies which issue debt. Sorry for all the technical jargons, but this is uh, how simple I could keep it. Uh, I have been into analytics for more than a decade now and uh, my journey in analytics has is, is been pretty interesting. I, I started my career in India and then I moved to UK. So I, I started my career in a, in, a, in a very small boutique firm where uh, after doing my MBA, I, I realized that I actually have uh, interest in analyzing data, analyzing numbers, statistics, and, and these kind of fields. Back then, when I started my career, I wasn't really sure of the word analytics because it, was, uh, it wasn't, the, the word wasn't really coined and, and framed and developed at that point in time. So it was all data and analysis and all those things, but data science, machine learning, analytics was not really fully coined at that point in time. So I, I thought that let's explore this, this uh, you know, uh, career as an option. And, and it looks interesting. It is a lot of, a lot of to deal with data and numbers and, and statistics. So maybe something that's aligned with my career aspirations. So I started my journey in analytics uh, back in India. And then I, I spent quite some time and mostly working in consulting companies like KPMG, Fractal Analytics. And then I moved into Prudential, which is a, uh, which is a financial uh, services company again. And then from Prudential India, I moved to Prudential in UK. And I've been in UK for last three years now. I have recently moved from Prudential to Moody these uh, investor services. So this is this has been my journey in uh, analytics. Uh, as a as a uh, analytics uh, enthusiast and as a as a person as somebody who has actually progressed uh, through different uh, uh, stages of, of uh, you know career and, and different uh, roles within analytics and, and and now I have moved to a bit senior leadership role here in Moody's. I I somehow realized that you know. Uh, the, the diversity that we have in, in analytics, especially in technical areas, which is which is quite uh, 
uh, aligned to coding and which is quite tech heavy i think that in terms of diversity uh, we kind of uh, lack a bit uh, and it's not really just a pro thing in india i think even even in uk i have realized uh, and and not just in uk i think it's it's pretty much a global thing that uh, somehow girls they are not very very uh, keen or women they are not very keen in picking up uh, technical careers as an option which i know is is changing that the, the, there's a bit of a shift coming and and now girls are actually getting interested in stem careers but somehow the the in terms of diversity in terms of percentages the numbers are still very low just to give you an example from my uh, experience itself in uh, in in uh, you know most of the organizations that i have worked in uh, the number of percentage of girls in big teams like 30 or 40 is it's like 4 or 5 so it's less than 10% and and when we move up in the hierarchy up in the ladders the numbers actually go lower so on an average the worldwide average is uh, women occupies and and it's given as it's a women and big data platform i'll just quote some numbers and data uh, on on a worldwide basis women occupy about 27 to 28% roles in in tech uh, fields when we move to higher uh, senior leadership role which is a cxo or heads or vps the number goes to 10% below 10% which is which is really uh, uh, not a very encouraging stat and a number to look at that how ex how from 27% the numbers actually go drop down to less than 10% why exactly is that happening why why do we not really have women leaders women women representing uh, more in more on senior platforms uh, within within tech and and analytics i think that's that's something that has uh, you know uh, stuck with me and and that's the reason this cause is really really close to my heart that how do we how, how do we actually bring in how do we motivate how do we actually have more women leaders within analytics within stem fields and that's the reason i i i was very very passionate uh, when when uh, you know when i came across this opportunity of being a mentor with women in big data i i kind of uh, i knew this is this is my calling and this is where i have to be that i need to uh, motivate inspire mentor whatever you might call it facilitate more and more women to be uh, uh, picking up a senior leadership role and analytics and and in whatever ways i can help i have to be there so that's 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 my journey akila over to you uh thanks babia um so my name is akila and uh, as shimiti already gave you an introduction i am a, a senior technical program manager at intel and i've been with intel for the past 11 years so i have a very heavy engineering background somebody who would look at my resume would think oh this person is mostly on the tech side um, but somewhere i think along the road i said okay no i don't want to do this uh, for the rest of my career i want to move towards um, you know something program management was the first step that i could take because data science was completely uh, you know, often a tangent uh, to what I did. A semiconductor is very, very, uh, it's a niche field. So the first thing I did was move to program management where I can, um, you know, start um, leading and start looking at problems at, a, you know, at a very higher level rather than the, you know, looking at the nitty gritty ex execution level details. So that was my first step. And uh, there I started looking at the problems. For example, let's say uh, you have certain defects, uh, you know, and how are, the de how are these defects escaping to the customer? How many are we solving? How many are we doing? What is the roadmap for this product in a couple of years time? So all these things, you know, I started getting interested. I've been doing program management the last three years. So, and that just helped me, um, you know, I, I, you know, it, it grew my interest uh, a lot more in data science and that's where I got in touch with um, Shala I think was the first because uh, I knew her from Intel and uh, then she uh, linked me up with the India chapter and eventually uh, you know I met with, uh, with Bhavya to you know help me uh, look at this uh, you know help me through uh, in, into the data science field getting more and more aware of the problems and more and more industry related aspects of how um, you know people look at data science it is a very vast field i don't think just looking at defects in my role will be enough for me to gain that knowledge so i think that is the first step that we took and it's been a great journey so far um, i must admit it's very hectic um we <laughs> my weekends are jam packed 
so I, for me, I think, uh, let me tell you about my, uh, you know, learning so far and my milestones. Uh, so after we met up, uh, so we decided what it should look like for me in a, you know, in a year's time or a six months time. Uh, since I have an engineering background, analytics comes to me very naturally. So for me, uh, getting into the tech domain is not that hard. Um, but what I lack is the industry experience. So my concentration, apart from getting a certificate uh, from IIITB, they have a six months course, uh, will be actually to gain as much industry experience that I can uh, by enrolling in hackathons and, you know, wherever, the, wherever they have, uh, you know, I would say weekend internships or something like that, where I can help out a startup or something. This is something that I'm going to be looking forward to. And I know that Bhavya is there to coach me and to help me uh, if I'm stuck at a particular problem. So this is something that is really great for me. And uh, even though I'm, uh, you know, a senior level uh, a professional, for me, this will be a different uh, uh, view of how we look at data. So yeah, so that's about me. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much for listening to my journey. Yeah. And Bhavya, do you want to uh, talk about anything about what- yeah, I think just think? to add to what you what you said, Akila, I think in terms of, you know, uh, the, the stint, uh, you know, and the learnings that we have had from the stint, you know, the journey started somewhere in June. And there are a couple of things that, that we realized, and we realized it very quickly, that uh, the reason this mentor mentee program and this platform is different than any other uh, program or, you know, any other, uh, you know, uh, process that, that you, would, you would have gone through is that in this, uh, uh, in this, this is actually a very, very curated relationship. So you, when you actually come across the mentor and a mentee, how you actually the mentor understands how you can grow as a professional as well as they understand your personal as well as professional goals and likewise from a mentee mentee also understands how exactly the mentor can actually contribute them and facilitate the entire journey so i think it's a very very curated and very very bespoke kind of a relationship rather than any generic certification right. program that you will get online so i think that's that's the reason it is very very special that you can create that bond create that relationship which can which is very, very very uh, personal to mentor and mentee and and i think both both mentor and mentee they grow with with this program and this uh, process uh, you know every everybody is benefiting out of it from a from a mentor point of view as and whosoever is interested in being a mentor i can say that you know the the offshoot impact of this is that you will have more diverse team and there there's a proven study that diverse teams they are they are more productive more efficient rather than just being dominated by males and and it's not really a remark remark on on uh, on anything but it's just that when you have diverse teams it's more productive which 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 i have observed myself that you know this is this is actually a, a offshoot product of this thing so i think if you are a mentee i think again in terms of if you want to uh, shift your career uh, paths you and you're you're not sure which which program or which uh, uh, online courses is good for me perhaps mentor would help you design or understand that these are the things that you should be doing so it is quite bespoke and curated and it right, depends right. on the relationship as well yeah so that's, that's the only thing that I would add yeah yeah i think i think if i didn't know of coming from you what the industry expects like uh, certain uh, you know details about the course itself I probably would have chosen a wrong course I mean I wouldn't say a wrong course but I would have picked something that you know has rating five without even reviewing it because I wouldn't know the details uh, so I think this way you know I, I feel that I've picked the right course and at least I'm not bored uh, learning these things a lot of people I know um, uh, you know, kind of come into this and say, okay, I don't have the time, either they're bored or they're not motivated and drop out very quickly. I've seen this over and over again. So I, I so far I'm, I'm excited. I'm doing it. And, um, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to December, <laughs> you know, to finish my next timeline. You know, that's the biggest yeah. milestone. So I think I me. wanted uh, Sriniti to put on the timeline. They have a milestone as well. So yeah, yeah, please. I, I can't see that actually. Can you just, so, yeah, so yeah. I think this is a wonderful timeline that this mentoring cohort has put together and what commitment. Kudos to Bhavya and Akila, really. Yeah. So, I see, uh, I, I, I must be honest, it's going to be, um, 
uh, the mentees, you know, they have to be really, really motivated. And also the mentors, because it takes time from them. You know, they've already got senior level, uh, you know, even me, I have a lot of pressure and at work. I mean, it does take a lot of time and effort. So it's not something that you start and finish off at the same time. And this brings uh, the mentor and the mentee closer and uh, this amount of commitment. I think if it's just something certificate, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so in that way, yes, uh, this, uh, these milestones are going to, you know, um, uh, be my biggest uh, uh, star and achievement for this year. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And we celebrate these milestones with all of you. So thank you, Bhavya and Akila, for sharing your story and inspiring many other women coming forward. A mentor, of course, is inclusive. So anybody can become a mentor. We have a, uh, you know, obviously a qualification criteria for that. But for mentees, I'm looking forward to more women coming forward and learning from these two very inspiring women role models. So and I also you. want to yeah. add one more thing. So don't feel if it's a mentee, just three plus years, don't let that number hold you back. I have you know, I have considerable amount of experience. Like I said, I'm switching careers. I'm not, I'm not, or I am leveraging uh, something that I have and I'm adding to my skill set. So don't get, uh, if there's some senior people who want to, uh, you know, change or get some more insight, don't let that hold you back. I'm a very good example of that. And uh, yes, it's going to take some amount of commitment, but um, it's worthwhile. At the end of the day, you can pat yourself on the back. So, yeah. And we all pat <laughs> for you. Uh, absolutely. No, I think just, just to mention, I think um, uh, Akila actually has slightly more experience than, than what I have. So guys, this is just an example that, you know, in terms yeah. of mentor and mentees, don't really hold yourself back. And, and I think uh, we, we are all here to learn each other, be, learn from each other's experiences. So, yeah. Right. I mean, in the semiconductor field, in the data center, Intel is a very hardware-centric company. Uh, so in that field, I might be a, you know, I might be, you know, <laughs> a star, but uh, data science is definitely, uh, yeah, a new new thing for me and I have to really push myself, but uh, yes, but I have, I think uh, I'm really happy with the support that I'm getting. So with that in mind, I, I took on the challenge. If I didn't have that uh, personal relationship with a mentor, I don't think I would have taken it. It's just like another certificate. I can do it online and forget it in a couple of days. So I think that is the big uh, buying uh, uh, selling point for me. At least uh, Soumya sold that to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you have been extremely passionate about, uh, you know, doing this and committed to this. So I'm hugely, uh, you know, grateful for you to share this journey, hopefully inspiring others as well who've joined us today. So thank you so much, uh, Akila and Bhavya, for sharing thank your you. story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. So Bhavya and Akila, before you guys uh, move on, I have to say I have been most impressed with what I have seen here, the way you shared your stories and the way they're literally flowing from the heart. So absolute pleasure and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for really making this a worthwhile session, I would say. Now, we move on to the next one, but mentoring my two cents, I think without mentoring, there would be no Apple computers and many of our great artists and perhaps industry leaders wouldn't be there where they are today, right? So not everything can be learned from the school, from the internet, from the library. Sometimes the only way to advance is to learn directly from someone who knows, and that is what a mentor is all about. In the Indian tradition, we know the Guru Shishya Parampara, the, uh, reminded in the modern times of what Winston Churchill had to say when he said we make a living by what we get but we make a life by what we give so that is that I think kind of sums it up on that thought let me welcome the three very distinguished panelists Shrija, Dr. Sudhindra and Smitha now quick one I would request all three of you to also give your introductions for perhaps a minute or so but also along with it, I may I just pose the first question. So we just heard that mentorship and we saw such a beautiful dynamics in play out here. It consists of very clearly a relationship and I would say it is a long term relationship and perhaps informally it may actually go beyond December also in the case of uh, Bhavya and Akila. So mentoring consists of this long term relationship between the mentor and the mentee and the relationship is clearly focused on supporting a 
plan, a growth and development plan of the mentee. So what is your own individual experience as the three of you have witnessed it up close and personal? Shrija, perhaps we could start with you first. Thank you, Piyush, and good evening all. Uh, I'm Shrija, I'm executive director and founder partner at Thought Edge. My career spans around two decades in the IT industry, and I focus on business success and uh, innovation in technology areas like big data, analytics, and AI. Today, I would like to congratulate our strategic partners, women in big data, on the launch of uh, Gayatri program. Uh, now, coming to your question, uh, data engineering is the field that I uh, primarily focus on. So, data engineering, uh, mentoring in data engineering is quite interesting because uh, we deal with an ever evolving technology stack. And for me, it means uh, identifying what are emerging trends in the market, learning a new tool or so on the go encouraging my mentees to explore uh, different uh, tools and uh, solution options, then evaluating the pros and cons of each, uh, troubleshooting when they run into issues and uh, so on. So uh, this uh, implies that uh, one needs to be consistently ahead of the curve to be able to coach uh, others. And uh, as a founder now at Thought Edge, uh, while uh, charting out the corporate strategy and vision, I uh, realized that uh, mentoring can play a significant uh, role in implementing and carrying this forward across the organization. Uh, we have devised an intuitive uh, mentoring framework that uh, aims to bring about technical advancement because we are a technology company as well as holistic uh, development and success of uh, our people uh, so the key here is in identifying the potential of each individual because each mentee can be different and uh, guiding them towards the goal and making course corrections when required to do so so mentoring for me has now an additional dimension. Over to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Interesting, very interesting. Sudhindra, Dr. Sudhindra. Thank you, Piyush. Yeah, I think uh, it's a fantastic day and it was very uh, inspiring to be frank uh, to hear to the two uh, ladies sharing how, like you said, Piyush, rightly, I was searching for that word. Thanks to you. Uh, it was right from the heart. I think it it got that uh, connect with uh, how they would have gone through and what they're going to going through uh, in the coming months. Um, I'm Dr. Sujindra Kaushik, so I am an engineer, but I've done my management education and my PhD in innovation because innovation is quite uh, uh, close to my heart. So I have been in this field for close to 28 years now. Uh, I uh, work at Volvo uh, as director of innovation and take care of our in internal incubator. Uh, I also volunteer in a couple of uh, uh, organizations like Women in Big Data, because I think that is one way, uh, like Piyush shared, is to give. And I, by no means, uh, I think it's a favor. I think it's a duty. Uh, that's how I see it from day one. And that's what keeps me going uh, to, to give back. On the question on mentoring, I think uh, uh, I have, unfortunately or fortunately, I didn't realize mentoring for me uh, so if i look at it as mentee and mentor me as mentee uh, was very different because i could never get down to that uh, board for whatever reason so i was more like ekalavi and dronacharya i had my own mentors and the mentors did not know i was their mentee so i used to follow them i used to observe i used to make my own lessons uh, my learning style uh, was helpful in that way of learning but as a mentor i have understood a few things and uh, uh, like you said, up close and personal have been involved in many such sessions. And I always uh, start with the fact to my mentee that it's a next to each other situation. It's not one here and one here, so that I'm going to give you some advice and you're going to listen to my advice. No, because I think in the end, uh, I think like she just said, it's all about making decisions as leaders and following that with the actions which will define who we are in the end and what we achieve. So I focus always on try to uh, help them that don't come to me for a solution. 
I would not give you a decision. I might help you how to make a decision because that's how you're going to get better and, and you know, different. And maybe in the process, I will also learn. Because I always tell them there is no cricket trainer, there is no tennis trainer, there is no football trainer. There is a football coach, there is a tennis coach, there is a cricket coach. That means there is always something going on on both sides of the table when you are sitting across as a mentor and mentee. And I think the key value of the experience of the mentor is how do you contextualize what is going on? I think I cannot get 30 years experience when I'm 20 years uh, uh, in the field. So I need to, uh, I don't have to wait for everybody, uh, every situation to teach me, I can learn from others. So as a mentor, I think we can contextualize and give them perspectives of what's going on. But in the end, it is the mentee's choice. And I think the onus is always on mentee. I even tell them even to book an appointment, I will not even trigger you. If you book an appointment, I will turn up on time. But if you don't, I will not. And if you don't turn up on time, I will not give you a call, I'm waiting. I'll just do what I have to do. So I think leaders will, will, will uh, have to know how to manage. And I think it will give them a strength to manage. And always on the lighter vein saying, the mentor is always behind you. Sometimes they will use the hand, sometimes they will use the leg, but you should be ready for both. Beautiful, beautiful. Dr. Sudhindra, on that note, solid. I especially like the analogy that you gave, which is in terms of being side by side and not being, it's not a level thing. And I think that was also very beautifully brought about when uh, uh, she shared with us that it is not as if in terms of numbers of years of experience, she's actually senior to the mentee that we just spoke. So great. And may I request, Smita, all yours. The floor is all yours. Thank you for joining us. And a quick introduction before you get on to answering. Yeah. Thank you, Piyush. And uh, thanks uh, for the entire Women in Big Data team for engage me in, engaging me in this platform. Uh, because uh, how I wish this platform was there at least 10 years ago, so that each of us could have you know, leveraged a platform like this to accelerate our career. Um, I mean, better late than never. And uh, I'm so fortunate to be a part of this platform and, and help in whatever way that I want. This is more about, you know, giving back to the society like Dr. Kaushik was mentioning right now. Um, right. So my journey in the data science uh, started, uh, uh, you know, very interestingly. Um, so I was a simulation engineer and uh, I was more into structural stability of things and uh, doing the computer aided engineering and stuff like that. Hardcore engineer. So, so basically I graduated as a civil engineer and then into, you know, masters in the structural engineering. So natural transition would have been me doing some, you know, building structures. Rather, I, I always believe in moving out of the comfort zone because that's what keeps me driving and, and wakes me up every day and, and you know, start looking at a brighter side of life. So I started working in a completely different mechanical engineering field where, uh, you know, we started analyzing the automotive structures. So with that experience, I moved on to an oil and gas domain. Uh, when we are doing complete installations of wellheads and things like that, uh, how would be your structural stability? Then I got an opportunity to work on a lot of painting technologies. And from there, we started looking good amount of data that were getting extracted from the wellheads. So what are we going to do with the data? We built some distributions, built some small regression plots, and I got a Six Sigma certification out of it uh, from uh, GE Oil and Gas, right? So like how Bhavya was telling back then, it was like, you know, about uh, 13, 14 years ago, I would say the data science or some, some that sexy word was not coined. So we were all like, you know, statisticians and uh, more from an engineering background with a lot of passion to math and science started developing an interest in seeing right. the data with respect to multiple distributions and all of that. So that kept me going and, and you know, I could get a certification on the Six Sigma Green Belt and that was a great achievement for me back then. And then I got an opportunity to work in uh, aviation. So like how uh, I was really able to connect to Akila, right? She started her career in data science as a new entrant. That is how I started my career with aviation. I hardly knew, uh, you know, how thermal engineering works. I did not know what a jet engine is. How does it look? What are the different stations within an engine? Do I know Brighton cycle? Absolute zero. So I started from scratch, learned thermodynamics, understood how analytics is applied in, uh, you know, jet engines and started seeing a different world. That is how my journey in the data science started. And now I'm currently working as a uh, 
you know, a director for AI and uh, head of data innovation India with Ericsson. So very enriching experience. And uh, uh, I'm able to support my team to build a lot of innovative ideas and, and, and launch multiple algorithms that actually makes a difference to the business. Now, coming to the question of, you know, mentor-mentee relationship, right? So, so who actually are, uh, are uh, mentors? Uh, they are more of, uh, you know, experienced and trusted advisors. There are three things to it, right? Experience, trust, and advisor. So experience, it, it, uh, these are the people who are, you know, kind of tuned within the field. And trust, whatever happens during that discussion, whatever happens in room stays in room. So that is how you build a trust and start, uh, you know, developing a relationship with each other. So I am fortunate, uh, you know, uh, as a mentee to get multiple mentors, like uh, Dr. Kaushik said, uh, I never coined the word as a mentee for myself. So it organically happened. Whenever I had an obstacle, I used to run to the people whom I felt uh, have gone through this journey and I would relate to what they have gone through and devise a specific solution for myself. So like he said, there is no, it's only an advice that is given, right? So you own up the the solutions that you actually want to develop to your situations because they knew my strengths they knew my weaknesses and they could throw a perspective on you know how i could uh, achieve overcoming uh, these stumbles that i'm going through so uh, many a times i needed a bigger perspective of life to overcome what i'm going through and 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 what should my next action should be to support my growth so i used to sometimes look up to my peers because they knew in and out of what i am and sometimes look up to my seniors because they have gone through a journey which I have not gone through and being open-minded is very important when you are a mentee yes. so you can't go with a you know defensive mindset hey I know what has happened because I have invested you know one year into the entire pro problem and so you know I know better than you so you just you just tell me what I need to that, that's not how it works so you have right. to be completely open-minded and and see the situation in a very different perspective and see what happens when you apply so sometimes things can go wrong so you have to own up if some things have gone wrong there's a lesson that you have learned out of it right so the, the the action is completely based on you you own up to it mentors have a capacity to change the lives of the businesses boost the succession planning improve diversity and inclusion within the system and create employee retention right so being a mentor it's also a privilege that's how i see if i mentor somebody which which you know i had the privilege of doing for a lot of people uh, it's definitely a privilege it's an opportunity to give back to the society uh, which has given to you so much to get to what you have done right and it's also an opportunity to build someone else's career so you are owning up a lot of responsibility it's not about just your yourself it's about the entire society and creating well-being in general so mentors actually provide a proper structure support to overcome the situations that you are in and it's it's more about you know uh, offering more to life that's how i see and it's also for a mentor to reflect on their own life so what did i do when i went through something so where did i stumble can there be a different advice that i can give so that from my experience i would have overcome such a journey right it's more of a reflection about your goals and priorities and you become a bit better person by sharing all of these with with a different individual right so it's about identifying the potential of a person being a mentee that that's i think a, a highest responsibility and getting them into the positions where they would not even have imagined so i think that's an accomplishment uh, that we achieve um, as mentors so this is my Very experience beautiful. thank you so much smitha i think tens of takeaways out there but two big ones for me one from a mentee point of view very important to always have an open mindset and two from a mentor's point of view not to forget the fact that we've been put in a position of privilege and we need to be making the most of it so thank you very much for those very beautiful nuggets and dr sudin ravir of course living in an age of technology and everything is dominated by this overarching technology uh view if i may well do as if i may put it that way so what do you think really is does technology and uh, you know kind of enable mentoring and is there a role that technology has to play here yeah i think uh, yes and no piyush because i think uh, the what has to be done between a mentor and mentee will will remain the same perhaps the how it will be achieved might uh, change a little bit maybe over the time skew a little bit uh, maybe in the four situations that we are in but i think it the the my personal take is we should uh, it should never replace a human face to face interaction because this is all about like it was mentioned uh, based on trust and respect um in in when i used to play a good decent level of cricket 
uh, I was opening the bats, uh, batting. So I used to tell my other uh, opener that sometimes we used to, we had to face, for example, a Javagal Srinath when he was in college. So I used to tell, don't play the bowler, play the ball. A good ball yeah. uh, can be bowled by anybody. So, and that doesn't mean a good bowler will always bowl a, bowl a good ball. So that means the, the level of abstraction that the mentor brings cannot be replaced by uh, when you talk about tools, for example, by a virtual thing. I always give the example that if I have to learn swimming, I can use technology to download the best manual for swimming, which will tell me lift my hand 30 degrees, lift your opposite leg by 40 degrees and so on. But nobody will tell you how it feels when you drink water first time when you're in the pool. How does the chlorine smell inside you? I think even mm -hmm. the mentor might tell you, but you have to get into the water. I think mm -hmm. technology, to summarize, will bring us maybe closer to some, some point. But beyond that, I think it's still the the face-to-face -face, uh, is, is what will be required. Of course, that can uh, the balance can be uh, uh, skewed a little bit depending on what the, who the mentor and mentee is, actually. Very nice, very nice. So the analogy of uh, the cricket analogy and the swimming pool analogy, I think, will resonate for a long time or every time that I think of a mentor mentee relationship in times to come. But I would just disagree a bit to say that perhaps in the modern age, especially as it is in a very real post pandemic world, and we're realizing that uh, pandemics may just not be a fad and may be coming back again and again, right? I think a hybrid approach is what will perhaps work best. And you're right that uh, theory can only take us so far and dirtying your hands is really the uh, thing going. But thank you very much for those thoughts. And let me come back to you, Shrija. I was, you know, I, I know that you have this, you talked about beautiful, the diversity, equity and inclusion bit. So how is it that we could encourage more women to, you know, come forward and look for such mentoring opportunities? Is there a... A kind of hesitation do you have you ever encountered that and is there something that we on this side can perhaps do in welcoming them you are muted Srija. we just talked about technology and mentoring and i think that technology can act as a key enabler here in creating awareness as well as bringing more and more women into mentoring and uh, currently with this pandemic, I think, uh, you know, this has acted as a catalyst for digital transformation. So it's a blessing in disguise. And uh, what uh, um, women uh, look up to role models. So when there are role models, then uh, they are, uh, you know, they feel supported to come and look for uh, mentoring. Um, I personally feel very good about the fact that many of my mentees are women. And uh, it is quite fulfilling to see the growth and transformation that I see in each one of them. Yeah. And uh, we at Thought Edge, uh, being pioneers in the field of uh, tech powered uh, platform for DEI called DIA, mm -hmm. I would encourage everyone, irrespective of what diverse backgrounds they come from, to reach out, seek guidance, and also uh, provide mentoring and guidance to those who look up to you. Right. Nice. Thank you so much, Srija. And I know that we're almost hitting the end and uh, the clock is ticking. So Smitha, very briefly, I know that you mentioned about AI and you're being the director of AI, if I got that right. So picking up from what you said earlier, what are your views on mentoring platform? It's efficacy. Do you think such a thing? What are your views? Yeah, this, this uh, uh, question is very connected to me. So me being in AI, I, I always want to throw an AI perspective into it, right? Um, see, the digital business is hyper-connected, but yet people are increasingly siloed. That is how I see the situations growing and growing with time. Um, so if ever there was a time for mentorship, I think it is now. I would double click on what you said, Piyush. Uh, even back in the days, uh, in terms of what we say business as usual, employees valued, uh, you know, someone to lean on who could offer support and advice uh, on advice on the tricky situations, right? And the business on the business decisions and uh, their career progressions and things like that. Back then, it was really easy. All you had to do was just go knock on their doors and uh, offer, uh, I mean, get help or write an email, uh, invite somebody for a coffee and and, and start doing the discussions. But uh, since COVID-19, it, it's all rocked up. 
um, yeah. the traditional avenues are kind of vanished completely and the second thing is the remote working has stripped the employees of the complete vital support and networks that was earlier available to structure and making the mentoring more you know enriching uh, bringing out the importance in people so all that have kind of taken a back seat now ai could be a savior in in these kind of things right because uh, ai could advocate a purpose to build platform so we can create such platforms to bring the mentor and mentee together and uh, mentor is not, men, uh, sorry the mentoring is not going anywhere right in fact it has gotten even better such pla platforms are popularly uh, you know uh, made analogous to uh, you know you can think of something like dating sites where you know the matching.com uh, kind of uh, you know uh, the mentorships that we can create so uh, examples of such platforms uh, which are you know available are see i'm not advocating anything here but i'm just giving some examples such as kronos elan etc so what they are doing they are they're, they're uh, matching the personalized uh, uh, career development profiles no longer a privilege for uh, for the people at the top so so some people who have good connect with the leaders will always be getting the right mentor so so such privileges are removed now by bringing in such kind of platforms so on these platforms the mentees uh they answer the questions about what they are looking for and their background so an ml algorithm can run in the background and in, it can instant instantaneously churn out the potential matches with the successful right. pairings that it can create between the mentors and mentees right so how beautiful this can be and the matches are generated based on massive scale of all the people that we have in the database with an organization by factoring numerous individualized parameters so where are you from uh, are you are you uh, having this kind of an ethnicity are you uh, married with children so all of these can be the parameters that we can think of and and mind you certain times the goals are not always about uh, somebody's career's next move right it can also be uh, someone going on a maternity leave and it can be matched with a mentor who already has children so what what happens to my career when i can come back right so that is the discussion that they can strike a chord with and uh, these are the scalable engines that can connect two employees who otherwise would not have connected at all so these matches can you know open up a lot of avenues and uh, just talking can create an innovation here that's the beauty of you know having an ai to empower the mentoring journey of of people so i think it will be you know location agnostic enabling a cross functional conversations and creating a community on its own so i think we have to leverage the technologies as much as possible to uh, enrich the uh, mentoring through multiple platforms so we are doing it with netflix right we are looking at the recommendation engines and uh, we are so happy that you know we are getting the right matches why can't it happen to the mentoring so all these analogous uh, improvements we need to imbibe to better ourselves to uh, with respect to what we are doing so that's my take very nice very very good thank you so much smita i think once again tens of things and thank you for those nuggets dating for relationship building the match making the agnosticity that you talk about beautiful so my two cents finally i know that we have hit the clock so thank you very much first and foremost all the three panelists but a mentor is someone who sees more talent and ability within you and this is to all the participants who may be the audience here and who may potentially be looking to become mentees so a mentor is someone who sees more talent and ability within you than you see in yourself and he or she also takes the role of bringing it out of you so that i think is a very beautiful place to begin with when we think of a mentor mentee relationship i am also reminded of what what steven spielberg had to say when he said the delicate balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image but giving them the opportunity to create themselves so on that note let me also take this opportunity to thank you all first the audience for attending this amazing launch of the gaitri program thank you shala from the us ekta and somya of course our leaders in india thank you bhavya and akila for sharing your first hand experience from the field the amazing panelists shrija dr sudhindra and smita thank you all the ec members most importantly thank you once again the audience and not to forget shriniti and hemashini and the team now one last note i consider myself privileged to a part of the executive committee at uh, women in big data because uh, it kind of enables me to achieve what i very strongly believe in when we talk about diversity equity and inclusion i think a world of exponential technologies which is powered by big data and this is something where 
more importantly with women at the heart and in the forefront of the movement is what enables it all so thank you to all the great women out there thank you very much for being here tonight we have one uh, uh, i think mentoring application form which himashini wants to bring up piyush so himashini sure. you want to bring out the mentoring application form and share it with everyone who wants to be part of this yes ma'am thank you piyush and thank you all the panelists and bhavya and akila thank you so much himashini please yes, go ahead yes uh, hi all so i'll run you quickly through the mentoring form so this forms would allow you all to register for the gayatri program either as a mentor or a mentee so currently we are seeing through the mentor form if we scroll through it uh, we collect all the data with regards to your qualification in which fields you all would like to give uh, a mentorship on your current role your experience in the tech field so all these data would be collected and it would it helps us to match mentors to the potential um, mentees to the potential mentors so yeah and also the fields that you all like to provide mentorship on so moving on to the mentee form yeah so here here also we collect the your information and your educational qualification role work and the areas in which you are interested in and would like to get a mentorship on like how many weeks uh, how hours per week that you can commit to at the end what what is the eventual uh, output that you would uh, like to gain out of this program so this uh, information helps us to match the mentors and mentee uh, and with this i would like to give it back to piyush thank you yeah Yeah, and this yes, is available on our website as well. Uh, Himachini, can you just show us to where it's available on our website? So I think people, folks, can see where it is. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, this page this is this is the page for the Gayatri program. It's available in our uh, Women in Big Data India website. So when we go through this website, like the web page, you yeah. would find the links to both the forms that I just showed you all. and going further down you have all information about this program and the announcement of our first cohort and yes thank you over to you piyush available on the linkedin posting for this launch program yes i think it is available on the uh, i mean we've linked it to the page and we will probably share the uh, form links also on our linkedin post as well so yeah, uh, exactly. but it's available on the home page of our website so if you go to women in big data india you should be able to click on gayatri program and you should be able to apply for the mentorship here so but we will also share uh, these links on the linkedin page as well so thank you yeah, dr kashik for bringing us yeah that's a good idea great so on that note uh, thank you all and thank you very much and thank you to the potential mentors and mentees out here as also uh, the people associated with women in big data i think a great journey to all of us together wishing it for all of us thank, thank you thank you piyush thank you everybody thank you thank you bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.